to solve this rational equation. We got 5 over x squared minus 3 is equal to 2 over x. Now our steps for solving a rational equation, our first step is to factor all of our denominators. Well, there's nothing to factor here. The next step, uh, step two, is to figure out what our LCM is and then multiply everything by it. Now, I, um, I got x's, so I'm looking for the greatest number of x's in a single denominator. There's two here, there's one here, so the greatest number of x's in a single denominator is two. So our LCM will be x squared. And we're going to multiply it times this fraction, so we'll multiply it times 5 over x squared. We'll multiply it times the negative 3. And we'll multiply it times the fraction on the right side, the 2 over x. <coughs> well, these x squareds cancel here. Here we got x and x squared. Uh, that cancels, and this, and leaves me 1x. So I'm left with 5 minus 3x squared is equal to 2x. Now, the third step is to solve. And I know that's kind of vague, but uh, at this point, you could have a linear equation or a quadratic. Well, we have a quadratic because we have a second power. So I'm going to take the negative 3x squared to the right side and take the 5 to the right side. So we get 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. As I wrote that down, I put it in the standard form. Standard form is where you arrange your terms from largest power down to smallest. Now, I chose to take it that direction to get everything over on the right side because I want the number that's in front of the x to the largest power to be positive. Well, now we want to factor this. This is key number. The reason why is we have x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of our x squared. So let's take a look at factoring it. We got 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. With the key number, we take our number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So a number at the beginning times a number at the end. So that gives us 15. We're going to come up with our three columns. The P column, we list all the products, give us 15. We got 1 times 15, 3 times 5. The sum column, S, we um, add them. 1 plus 15 is 16, 3 plus 5 is 8. D for difference, we subtract smaller from larger. 15 minus 1 is 14, 5 minus 3 is 2. Number we're looking for is a number in front of our middle term, which is 2, which is right here, which means I'm going to use 3 and 5. Now remember with the key number method, we rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number in the p column that we're using, which is the 5, will always be the same size as the middle term, which in this problem was positive. So we've got plus 5x. The number of circles in a difference column, d for different signs. One will be positive and one will be negative. Since the 5 was positive, then the 3 has to be negative. Well, we're going to factor by grouping. So I group the first two together, group the last two together. Looking at just the first group, they have an x in common, GCF. So that gives us 3x plus 5. Looking at my second group, they have nothing in common, but the first term is negative. So I'll factor out a negative 1. Remember the note on our GCF says if first term is negative, you always factor out a negative. Now our goal was to get this parentheses the same as this, which it is. Uh, so I'll factor out the 3x plus 5. Now to see what goes in your second set of parentheses, you can now cross out these 3x plus 5s. And what isn't crossed out is what goes right here, which would be x minus 1. And I don't know why I put the zero equals 0 there. Let me take that away. Okay. So over here, this now becomes uh, 0 is equal to 3x plus 5 times x minus 1. Zero factor property. It says you get zero on one side, you factor the other side, you set each factor equal to zero. So I'll set 3x plus 5 equal to zero, and I'll set x minus 1 equal to zero. Now these are linear equations, so we'll go through those steps. Um, I'll, I'll work with 3x plus 5 first. Uh, first step, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions, don't have any. Third step, get everything with x on one side and numbers in the other, so I'll take 5 over. So we got 3x is equal to negative 5. Remember, you take anything across or equals, your sign changes. Last step is to divide both sides by a number in front of your x, which is 3. And we end up with x equals negative 5 thirds. Now this one, take the negative 1 over, and we get x is equal to positive 1. 
Now, last thing we need to do is semi-check our answers. We don't need to fully check them, but we need to make sure these don't cause any denominator equals zero. Let's look at negative five-thirds first. If I put uh, negative five-thirds here, negative five-thirds squared is not zero. If I put negative five-thirds here, it's not zero, so we're fine. If I put one in, one squared is not zero, and if I put one here, it's not zero. Again, we could care less what it actually gives us. We want to make sure it doesn't cause any denominator to equal zero. So those would be our two answers.